most of the time in economics, we talk about economic goods. And a good would just be, simply put, something that makes us happy. In economic terms or in more technical terms, a good would be something where the marginal utility or the incremental happiness of consuming that thing is always positive or greater than zero. We don't talk about them as much, but economic bads also do exist. And bads are just things that rather than making us more happy when we consume them, make us less happy when we consume them. And we can think of an economic bad as something where the marginal utility or the incremental happiness of consuming that thing is negative or less than zero. It seems a little strange to think about consuming economic bads because really why would we ever do that? But we actually do it all the time. You can think about economic bads as things like pollution, noise, bad smells, things like that. Because we usually talk about economic goods, we usually talk about indifference curves in the context of having two economic goods or two things that make us happy. Remember, an indifference curve is just a set of points that represents a particular level of happiness. So all points on an indifference curve make the consumer equally happy. And we can think about in each of these cases how these indifference curves are constructed. Let's say we're at a particular point of consumption here with a certain amount of good X measured on the horizontal axis and a certain amount of good Y measured on the vertical axis. If we were to keep this individual at the same level of utility or the same level of happiness, we would have to think about trade-offs. For example, if we were to give this consumer more of good X, all else being equal, that would make the consumer happier. So in order to keep the consumer indifferent, we would have to couple that increase in X with a decrease in the other thing that makes them happy, or good Y. And so we can see that if we were to trace out an indifference curve, we would have to have it moving somewhat down and to the right. So maybe a second point on our indifference curve would be something like this here. This is why indifference curves slope downward when we talk about economic goods, which is our typical case. And we would see, you know, an indifference curve that would look something like this here. As it turns out, we have a bunch of indifference curves, each that represents a different level of utility or happiness. So here's a second indifference curve. And it's helpful to think about intuitively which one of these makes the consumer happier, or which one represents a higher level of utility. In this case, I sort of spoiled the surprise by labeling one of these indifference curves ICL and one IC high, the L and the H just for low and high. But we can see that this has to be the case that ICH represents a higher level of utility because if you go from ICL to ICH, you'll notice that the consumer is consuming more of both goods. And because the goods make the consumer happier, having more of both has to represent a higher level of utility. We can do a similar analysis for the case where X is a good and Y is a bad. And again, we can start at a particular level of X and Y. Maybe you just make that this point here. And we can think about what's going to keep the consumer indifferent or at the same level of utility. And again, we can say, let's think about hypothetically only increasing the amount of x. If x is a good, all else being equal, that's going to make the consumer happier. And so we need something that's going to bring the consumer back to the original level of utility. Well, since y is a bad, adding more of y is going to make the consumer sadder. Or in other words, it's going to compensate for the happiness increase from the increase in the quantity of good x. So in this case, to keep the consumer indifferent, we would have to add both x and y, or alternatively subtract both x and y. Either way, we're going to get a new point on the indifference curve that's somewhere here. So we can see that our indifference curves are upward sloping when x is a good and y is a bad. And in fact, they usually have a shape that looks something like this here. You don't have to know too much about why the indifference curve is shaped the way that it is, 
But like with the indifference curves for two goods, the shape is the result of what we call diminishing marginal utility or how x becomes less incrementally useful as we get more of good x. In this case, we've also assumed what we call increasing marginal disutility of good y. And if you think about y as pollution, this would basically account to a case where, well, if you only have a little bit of pollution, an incremental unit of pollution isn't so bad. But if you're already at a high level of pollution, an incremental unit of pollution is much worse than it would be if we had otherwise clean air. So that's generally the idea of increasing marginal disutility. And when you put those two things together, you get a trade-off that looks like this here. Again, I could draw a bunch of indifference curves, but I'll just put a second one in here like this, and we can think about which one of them represents a higher level of utility. Probably the easiest way to think about it is I can envision going from one indifference curve to the other by just moving to a point that includes more of good x but the same amount of good y as before. And since x is a good, x adds to my utility, so it must be the case that the indifference curve with more of x but not with more of y confers higher utility. And so by that logic, I can label this indifference curve here ICH for high utility, and this indifference curve here ICL for low utility. Now let's think about a case where x is the bad and y is the good. Again, let's just start at an arbitrary point of consumption. Maybe have that point be here at this level of x and y. And again, we can think about starting at a point where we have increased our amount of x but haven't done anything in terms of our quantity of y. Because x is a bad, this change in x by itself is going to make the consumer less happy. And so to bring the consumer back to the original level of utility or back to indifference, we're going to have to compensate the consumer with something that makes them happy. And one thing that makes the consumer happy is more of good y. And so we can think about indifference being a coupling of more of x and more of y. And so again, we would have a new point of indifference that is up and to the right like this. Again, because of the principles of diminishing marginal utility and increasing marginal disutility, we get an indifference curve that looks something like this here. Again, like before, we can add in another indifference curve to think about relative levels of utility. And in this case, when we go from one indifference curve to another, one way to think about this, again, is that when we move to the right in our indifference curves, we're moving to a situation that we can envision as having more of good x, but the same amount of good y as before. And in this case, because x is a bad, it must be the case that this move causes the consumer to be less happy or at a lower level of utility. So we can then conclude that the indifference curve on the right has to be at a lower level of utility, call it ICL, as the indifference curve on the left, which we call ICH for higher utility. Note that you can think about the move from one indifference curve to another in a number of different ways. For example, if I were to draw the arrow down like this, you can envision the move from ICH to ICL as a situation where the consumer has less of good Y but the same amount of good X. We get to the same place because since Y is a good, having less of Y and the same amount of X as before is going to make the consumer less happy. Lastly, we can think about the case where X and Y are both bads. And again, if we were to start at a particular point of consumption here, we could think about, well, what happens if all we do is we add more of good X? Well, since X technically isn't a good, is instead a bad, that's going to make the consumer less happy. And so to bring the consumer back to indifference, we're going to have to take away some of the other thing that makes the consumer unhappy. And so to bring the consumer back to indifference, we'd have to also take away some of, I guess not good why, we'd have to take away some of bad why. If we put this together, we get a new point on the indifference curve 
that's somewhere here down and to the right from the original point. As it turns out, the principle of increasing marginal disutility when both of the goods exhibit this principle results in indifference curves that are shaped something like this here. If we draw another indifference curve to see how they compare to one another, we notice that one of the indifference curves is at points that contain more of both of the bads. And it has to be the case that having more of both of the bads makes the consumer less happy. So it has to be the case that this indifference curve that's further away from the origin is at a lower level of utility, again, ICL, and the indifference curve that is closer to the origin has to be the higher level of utility, or ICH. And notice that this is opposite of the case that we have when both of the goods are, in fact, goods rather than bads. <laughs>